Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. VTOL SSTO. Now I want to start off by saying that in, a, in the cinematic you saw the number 7 right here and then the American flag right there. Well, unfortunately I found out that during ascent this thing heats up pretty good and those flags like to pop. So I ended up having to put them on the inside of the wings right here, which doesn't seem to be a problem during ascent. Um, so yeah, they, they, if you're wondering why I suddenly saw them and didn't see them well that that's the reason why now first thing i know you're going to notice is the amount of engines on this thing just freaking wah this is of course because of the fact that the whole thing including the 36 ton orange tank cargo is about 199 tons actually it's closer to two to two, 200 tons is two 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 <laughs> what the fuck so with this kind of weight, you're going to need a lot of engines to get it, uh, well, to, to get it to, to take off vertically. Especially air breathing engines, because air breathing engines aren't as strong as typical rocket engines. Not only do they have spool up time, but some of them don't even reach their max potential unless they're going very fast in the first place. Now, all of these VTOL engines are based upon one type of design. It's a, it's a design that I made for a smaller craft, for a smaller VTOL craft, I don't know if you saw that video or not. If it, it's, uh, if you haven't, it'll be at the end of this video. But through trial and error, I've been able to come up with a design that actually reduces drag by quite a lot with only one robotic part. And because of the fact that it's not too heavy or too powerful on that robotic part, we don't have to worry about wobbliness or just not operating uh, correctly. Hey, Parker Tepless. Tepless? Welcome to the Ford. Oh no, what I join? Space call. Now, in order for the rapier engine to actually have enough air to be able to continue operating in atmosphere while standing still, I gave it small circular nose cones. You see, shock cone air intakes can actually suck up a lot of air. One shock cone air intake can actually power up to six rapier engines. Now, mind you, you have to actually be moving about 20 meters per second before you can go full power with one shock cone intake powering six rapier engines. If you try to do it right off the bat, they'll flame out because of the fact that the shock cone air intake only works well when it's moving, especially at fast speeds. Sitting still, however, it doesn't hardly suck up anything. I mean, it sucks up something, but it's it's not enough. It's hardly anything. So to counter this, for every single one of these engines, we've got the small circular, circular air intake to help suck in that yummy, yummy air in order to get these things firing at a complete standstill. And it works. It works beautifully. 300 and 35 parts but believe it or not even though it's the seventh model or design of this craft, the Merlin, it's come a long way. It used to look a lot uglier. <laughs> Whew. I plan on working on it some more, maybe in the future. Try to smooth it out and get it looking a little more prettier. For those of you asking why did I, why did I, the fuck, why did I just use all the rapier engines instead of whiplashes? It's because it's because whiplashes are more powerful at sea level than rapiers are, and plus rapiers actually weigh more than whiplashes. So I was looking at weight plus strength. Once you get up to an altitude and altitude, what altitude and speed where the whiplashes no longer are able to perform and the rapiers kick into rocket mode, that's pretty much all you need. The rapiers have done, the rapiers, the whiplashes have done their job and now it's just time for the rapiers to go ahead and rocket all the way into space. So how does one build a very large heavy VTOL craft? I'm glad you asked because I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I, I do know. Obviously, I had to build one. But still, it's not as easy as one would imagine it could be. One has to limit themselves to the rules of building when it comes to KSP. Like, you can't make anything too heavy or too big rely on some sort of mechanical part because the mechanical parts themselves aren't that strong. So in order to do something large on a big scale, you have to use a bunch of little mechanical parts that only have so much weight being applied to them that way they can operate correctly without the whole thing drooping or falling apart so once you understand the fact that the mechanical parts do have extreme limits you're only gonna put maybe a like the weight of an engine on one and that's it everything else stays stationary now if you want more details on how to build a VTOL SSTO the link will be at the end of the video 
Thank you. So if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I try to make a video at least once a week, Kerbal Space Program, although sometimes we do stream during the week. It all depends. I also have a membership program if you want to check it out. You get cool little badges and emojis and stuff. Pretty cool. But anyway, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being here. Love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.